Revelation 9. If you believe the Bible, you'll get saved. Because I'm going to tell you something, friend. This is, as I've said many times as we preach through the book of Revelation, this is not a Disney story. This is not a Hollywood fiction. This is the Word of God. And the Word of God tells us that there was, last week we, we saw that there was a woe uh, pronounced on, um, uh, in chapter 8, verse 13. And we see the first trumpet was, uh, was released and it consumed the vegetables and hell and fire and blood uh, was cast upon the earth. One third of the trees, all the grass was consumed. And then uh, chapter, eight and, nine, uh, chapter uh, 8 and verse 8 and 9, the second trumpet was sounded and uh, the comet uh, hit the earth and mountains fell into the sea and chemical changes in one third of the sea and catastrophic things happened in the ocean like uh, has happened overseas and wiped out whole countries and whole islands. One third of the sea life died, one third of the ships destroyed, so the ocean was affected. The third trumpet, uh, verse 10 and 11 of chapter 8, we see the third trumpet, uh, the burning star falls, uh, bitter water is results, fresh water is affected. The fourth trumpet, uh, we see the light diminished by one third, sun smitten, moonlight af uh, affected, uh, starlight affected, uh, daylight reduced. Uh, the atmosphere was affected. And then the sober statement in the last verse of this, um, of this uh, precious ch chapter, chapter 8, uh, pronounces three woes. Those three woes uh, are the trumpets that are about to sound. Fifth, sixth, and seventh. We'll find the fifth and sixth trumpet sounding. Um, in just a moment, in verse chapter nine, and we'll next week uh, we'll go and skip a chapter and go to the seventh angel sounding in chapter eleven, verse fifteen. So let's have a word of prayer even before we pray, or before we even uh, read the word of God. And I want you to ask God to give you a burden for souls. I want you to ask God to uh, help you truly believe that the rapture is taking place. And if you believe in the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to be. Um, uh, pre-millennial. You have to be pre-tribulational. You have to realize that the rapture is going to take place before all this breaks out and those that are in the uh, tribulation that's heard the gospel will believe a delusion and uh, I'll tell you why in verse 21 of this chapter. So let's pray. Father, thank you that you are the Son of God and thank you dear God for uh, Jesus. Thank you God that you deserve the preeminence because you've redeemed us God, you've translated us. God, you've forgiven us for all our sins, all our past. It's under the blood. The Bible says in Psalms 103 that uh, it casts our sins as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, we thank you for that kind of forgiveness. And I needed it, and every person in this room needed it. And God, as we see the judgment of God falling upon this earth right after uh, three and a half years of false peace, and the Antichrist revealing itself, and these, these judgments start coming forth, God, help people to realize it's real, and it's imminent. And God, there's no getting right with God once the judgment starts falling. And so, Lord, help us as we study chapter 9, not just to get these symbols and, and this uh, uh, symbolism down, but, dear God, to get this down that, Lord, you're coming soon, and none of our friends, none of our family, we want to be going through that. God, we want to see them spared from the wrath to come. So, Lord Jesus, help us tonight to preach this with conviction. And God, help us to see some conversions in this church, souls being saved because they believe the Word of God. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We see the chapter 9. Uh, I'm going to read about the first uh, trumpet, or the fifth trumpet. It's the first woe. And um, you're going to see a demonic beast. You got that picture, brother? I don't even want to put it up, but it's uh, probably give the kids nightmares. But there's a uh, demonic locust um, cr crowned demon creatures from an open pit is released. And uh, the amazing part about it is people want to die and they can't. Death takes a holiday. How many of you has ever been bit by a scorpion? Raise your hand. 
and live to tell it. One, two, Texas people get bit by scorpions and don't even feel them. Amen, no, not really. Uh, Ms. Linda's bit, been bit by a scorpion. Brother Steve, you've been bit, bit by a scorpion. You live in uh, North Whitfield, you can get bit by anything. Amen. Um, anybody else got bit by a scorpion? All right, is it pleasurable? Uh, it's not. I heard that you swell five times the normal bite of anything. It's venomous. Uh, you know, we ought to thank God wasps are not as big as birds. So, amen, they kill us. I mean, that's strong venom, isn't it? I've been, st- I've been stung by hornets, and I remember one time I was, had a long leg cast, and I was down at Lake Hartwell for some unknown, ungodly reason, fishing, that's what it was. And a bunch of hornets got, got, got after me, and I dove in the lake with a long leg cast on. I ended up in the emergency room. You know, not from the drowning by the long leg cast, just trying to get away from those hornets. They got me in the head. See what happened? And I want to tell you something. <laughs> Scorpions have a bad bite. That's what I'm trying to say. And these scorpion beasts are released from the pit of hell, the bottomless pit. And, uh, and I know this artist did not do uh, it justice, but I wanted you to see uh, just some kind of symbol of it. And uh, the fifth angel sounded. Read with me. And I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth and to him that was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now, folks, I believe that's Satan himself uh, that's come to get the key to the bottomless pit, probably up in heaven accusing you. He's the accuser of the brethren. And uh, we need to thank God that greater is he that is in us than he is in the world once you get saved. Now, if you're not saved, then uh, you're, you're prey for the devil and his attacks. And uh, thank God for the victory that was won at Calvary. Uh, uh, Turn over to Revelation 12, verse 11. The Bible says, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame who? The devil. Uh, You can overcome the devil through the blood, uh, the blood of the Lamb. And so we see in verse 1, He saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him that was given the keys to him, that was given the keys of the bottomless pit. Now, the bottomless pit is uh, mentioned many times in the Scripture, uh, and every time it's, it's, it's referred to the place of judgment, the place of hell. It's referred in the New Testament nine times, in the Old Testament 30 times. The bottomless pit. And folks, it's a pit of darkness, it's a pit of weeping and gnashing of teeth, it's a pit of torture. But it says he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke from the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. But they weren't just normal locusts. It says, and unto them was given power, as the scorpion of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass or the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. Those that have been saved during the tribulation, they couldn't touch. And it says to them that, was, uh, that it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. Death takes a holiday for five months. And their torture was as the torture, torment of a scorpion. When the striketh a man. Three of y'all been struck by that. And it says, in those days shall men seek death. They want to die. And shall not find it. And desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And here's the shape of the locusts were likened to horses prepared into battle. And on their heads uh, were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the face of men. A terrible beast, terrible monster. Again, it's not a monster movie around Halloween. This is real stuff. And they had hair as the hair of a woman. And that symbolizes enticing, attractive. And their teeth were as the teeth of a lion. And lion's teeth are terrible because they got so much bacteria. Usually when a person is bit by a lion, they never heal. And they had a breastplate, as it were, breastplates of, of iron. Check it out, this artist. 
And the sound of their wings were as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. They had tails likened to scorpions. And there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. They had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, head demon, whose name is in the Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, both his names is Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there come two woe more hereafter. So John's saying, woe, 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 and there's a silence at the first of chapter 8, which is a silence before the storm. And Folks, this woe is it's hard to understand. I don't understand all of it, but I know that there is an opener of a, of a bottomless pit. And uh, in Revelation 4.1, heaven opened. But in Revelation chapter 9, verse 2, hell opens. And uh, it's parallel to the judgment in Exodus chapter 10, verse 12 through 15. And many of the plagues in Revelation correspond and resemble, but to a more nth degree, the plagues of of Israel, uh, uh, on the Pharaoh, on Egypt, because they were Christ's rejectors also. So it pays to receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. Because I want to tell you something, that bottomless pit, everyone's going to go to after this tribulation. I often said this, I'll say it again, the tribulation is just the waiting room to hell. Just because you go through the tribulation doesn't mean that you're, ex- that you're uh, exempt from hell. It's just a waiting room to hell. It's a public judgment to tell Uh, the sinners by using creation and the world to bring judgment upon a Christ-rejecting world that God is truth, that God is justice, and that God is merciful, and that you should have been saved. And so the opening of the pit, Satan, the origin of the judgment is from beneath. Look at verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as a smoke of great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Scientists have done several studies and found out that our earth is full of fire. That our earth is full of um, uh, molten lava and sometimes it comes out in the, in the form of, um, of uh, earthquakes. And Sometimes those earthquakes are in the middle of the ocean and you have a, uh, what do you call it? A tsunami. I want to call it a tsunami, but it's a tsunami. And, uh, and those tidal waves are caused by earthquakes and they literally wipe out whole continents and countries. Islands are misplaced. And folks, this is, a, this is contraction pains. You know, you ladies has had a baby. When contractions start, it's time to move towards the delivery room. Say amen. That's a, that's a sign that there's something about to happen really wonderful. Amen. It's contractions. And folks, the contractions that we're going through, uh, the earthquakes in diver places, the famine, the Middle East crisis and all the demonic and devilish things that are happening through ISIS is contraction pains before the rapture. So I'm going to tell you something, friend. You can read the Bible, but also listen to the news, and you'll find out we're closer to the rapture than we've ever been before. And it's expedient that you get saved, and it's expedient that you tell your loved ones to flee from the wrath to come. Because there's about to be a earthquake, and there's going to be, quote unquote, death's going to talk, take a holiday, and hell is going to break out on this earth. That's exactly what these verses say. And the Lord's going to allow the devil himself and the head demon to execute men and ladies uh, that have rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ this, this, this fourth trumpet, or this fifth trumpet, is a supernatural judgment that falls on the earth uh, as, it, as ch- uh, trumpet number four was. And the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and third part of the stars and third part of them that was dark. And there's a dark darkness that comes over the, a third part of all the earth. Uh, and the night likewise. There's a darkness over the night even. No moon. And folks, we see that there's a, a whoa, whoa, whoa. It's yet to sound, and here's the coming forth of this judgment. It's the results of the judgment is found 
In verse 3, they have power to, to, to torment. It says, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and of them was given power as the scorpion. It didn't say it was a scorpion. It says as a scorpion. Of the earth have power. So it's like that, but it's probably much more pungent and much more poisonous and much more painful. They say that when a person's uh, stung by a scorpion, that they swell five times more than being stung by any other thing, a snake or anything. It's a terrible sting. And then we see not only uh, the results of the judgment, but we see the appearance of the locusts in verse 7 through 10. Now, I don't want to read too much in this, and I, I, I really believe that you need to see that he was trying to describe how horrible this monster-type locust from hell was, and it might not have been exactly like this. I'm not saying the Bible's not exact, but it says like as. It says, it says in verse um, <clears throat> 7, it says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, prepared unto battle. On their heads were as it were crowns like gold. And their faces were as faces of men. Probably much horrible than a face of a man. Now, some of our faces would scare anybody to death. But I'm going to tell you something, friend. These faces were as a man. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And so it was a vicious looking beast, to say the least. And then they had a breastplate, as it were a breastplate of iron. And the sound of their wings as a sound of chariots. Didn't say there was chariots it was riding. And many horses running the battle. They had tails likened to a scorpion. And there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. They had a king over them. It was organized uh, principality and ruler of darkness, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew and then the Greek. So this one woe was passed. And so we see the appearance of these locusts. It scared anybody to death. And I wouldn't even show this picture in front of the kids because they wouldn't sleep. I looked at it and I said, you know, I'm going to show it because I want to have some kind of visual reminder of how terrible this is and how God describes this judgment from hell that's released from this first woe or this fifth trumpet. And then we see uh, it was organized, had a ruler, as the devil has principalities and powers and rulers in dark places. But praise God, we can put on the whole armor of God, the Bible says, and we can be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that strengthens us. And so, folks, the bottomless pit is the home of the demons and the prison of demons, the spirit fallen angels, but also the bottomless pit is going to be a place where there will be a lot of people with inflicted pain forever and ever, na weeping and gnashing of teeth, thirst, darkness, remembrance where the worm dieth not. Hell's not a place you want to go to. When I got saved as an 11 half year old uh, child, and I'm glad I got saved young because every year you don't get saved, you get harder and harder and harder. Your heart gets callous. And then sometimes you don't get this hard, you just, just put it off. You're waiting on a filling. Don't wait on a filling. Come by faith to be saved. The fillings come later. Say amen. It's the caboose. Faith is the, mo is the locomotion of this thing. Amen. Faith is the victory. Faith, by faith we're saved. By grace, through faith we're saved. Not by feelings. Sometimes I don't even feel saved. But I'm still saved. Amen. And folks, I want to tell you something. Uh, we need to have blessed assurance that comes from the Word of God. And so the first woe is the fifth trumpet. And then I want you to see the second woe on the world. And that's the hellish horseman. And a lot of people, you'd be surprised how many people have said this is the modern helicopter that shoots fire. Well, I don't believe that a second. Or he'd say it. It's, uh, it's similar. It might look kind of like a, one of these uh, Apache helicopters or Black Hawk that spews the fire out. And that's a terrible way to, to die and a terrible way to be in war. And... Um, Vietnam was full of those uh, because of the thick uh, terrain. They'd just burn everything, people, everybody. It's terrible. That's war. But this is judgment. 
And the sixth seal, look at verse 13, sounded and I heard a voice from four horns of the golden altar which were before the Lord saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Now that's key, that it's at the Euphrates. Folks, the Euphrates uh, streams into the Garden of Eden. So here's judgment uh, that um, uh, paradise is lost and where there's rebellion by men because even in this same place the first murder took place and then the first rebellion took place. They tried to build a, a tower to heaven. Tried to build their own way. And folks, it's, it's significant that this uh, is breaking out uh, in, in the great river Euphrates. And these four angels were loose which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slain the third part of men. So death releases its grip, uh, uh, this sabbatical, and begins to, a third more of the world is, is, is killed. And look at, look at this army. The number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousands, and I heard the number of them. That's 200 million demonic horses. Um, bath of brimstone and death. Six trumpet. One third of the men's killed by this and Seal number four in Revelation six eight, that's one fourth of the population was killed. Trumpet six, Revelation chapter nine, verse eighteen, one third of the of the uh, population was killed. So one half is left, fifty percent is left. Except those days be short, and the flesh, uh, um, uh, no flesh would be saved. They'd all be killed if the tribulation didn't end. And folks, uh, who are these four bound angels in the Euphrates River? But there's some fallen angels. Uh, either the followers of Satan when his first rebellion. And Isaiah 14, 12 says that, that Satan was an angel. He was the song leader, pardon the expression, Brother Randy. He was in charge of the music. And he said, I will exalt myself. I will make myself God. He said, no, you won't in here. And he kicked him out of heaven. And he became the devil, Satan. And I want to tell you something, folks. The key... Uh, thing that got him kicked out of heaven and went to hell was pride. You know the main thing that sends most people to hell? Pride. Pride is a terrible sin. Its middle letter is I and the middle letter of sin is I and a lot of people won't get saved because they're afraid what people will think of them. I wouldn't care what people thought. If I thought I was going to go through this I'd crawl down this aisle. I'd beg, cry, weep, whatever. I'd just confess every sin I had and, and know it's not necessary and just say, hey, I'm a sinner by grace and by nature. And Lord, you became sin for me who knew no sin that I could be made the righteous of God in what you did at Calvary. All because God so loved the world. And so we see this voice from heaven in verse 13. We see the command for the angels and then we see the destiny of death in verse 15. The four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. And the number of them was 200 million, an army. And then we see the tools of this death, found in verse 17 and 18. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them that sat on it, uh, having breastplates of fire and adjacent brimstone. And the heads of horses were as the heads of a lion. And out of their mouth, issued fire and smoke and brimstone. That's where they get the helicopter spewing fire. I don't think that's an accurate translation. I think they were also beasts, and I believe it was a hellish horseman that God released upon this earth. By these three were the third part of the men killed by the fire and by the smoke, and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. I hear it's a terrible way to die, being on fire. Our first song leader, um, accidentally, his glasses fogged up of Collins and Aikman. I think it's over here on Cleveland Highway somewhere. And he walked off into a dive vat. And they said his, his body was like a marshmallow. And they flew him down to, airlifted him down to um, Grady. I remember when Barbara called me and said, I was on the way. And they said, no, he's already died of the infection that set in so quick from those burns. And he screamed, he was in agony, but I want to tell you something, the next 
time I saw him was in a casket and I preached his funeral and I preached on Selah because he was our song leader. Stop and think about it. And what was so great about Jerry Massey's death was that it was the end of his pain. If he asked for the bodies to be praised of the Lord, it was, in, it was, a, it was a, a time of reunion. It was a time of rejoicing. No more pain in, in uh, uh, heaven. One day in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, the Bible says, And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Aren't you glad they're going to a place where there's no more pain? I'm not good with pain. I, you know, I, I don't like it. I'm trying right now to, to relieve pain in my body. Uh, I, I, I never thought I would get old. I never thought I'd get slow. I never thought I couldn't stand. Never thought that. And I, 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 you know, I'm praying for healing. And, you know, I don't like pain. Nobody likes pain, but I want to tell you something. If you don't like pain, don't go to hell. Because hell's full of it. And he releases these 200 million to exact pain upon the inhabitants of this Christ-rejecting world. And folks, this rebellion, uh, this Euphrates River, one of the rivers of Eden, uh, divided near the Satan when Cain slew Abel. Rebellion against God, this Tower of Babel. And here's the fifth trumpet, men tormented, the sixth trumpet, men are killed. And there's a voice from the altar. And I want to close with this. We see in verse, uh, I think I ended with verse 18, it says, by, by these three was the third part of the, of the men killed by fire and by smoke, brimstone. It says, for their power is in their mouth <coughs> and their tails. And for their tails were likened to serpents, and their head, they had heads, and, and with them they, had, they, they would do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works. <coughs> I, want to, I want to show you this right here. It says, yet repented not of their works. What's going on in the tribulation? I'll tell you what's going on in, during the tribulation. The Holy Spirit is withdrawn. And I want to tell you something, you, 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 you don't want to live in a neighborhood with wicked people, uh, whoremongers, and you don't want your children abducted. And, uh, the day I was in a meeting up at Anchor Hope, and the Amber Alerts were going off everywhere. Uh, people have been missing since Sunday over in Alpharetta. You've got to watch your children, you've got to be careful. We have uh, cameras all over this church. We don't let anybody pick up anybody in the nursery that's not authorized. We're real careful. We're going to be more careful after the safety meeting. And you got to in these last days because there's a lot of perverts out. And I hate, I hate that we have to put up with all this and we have to be so careful. And, and, and there's so much destruction. And I can't imagine how I would feel if, if my child was missing since this last Saturday in Alpharetta. They can't find the little girl. How would you mothers feel? Well, I'm going to tell you something. In hell, there's going to be an eternal separation, and it's going to feel so dark and so gloomy because there'll be no hope, there'll be no reunion. Somebody one time I knocked on the door and said, I hope I go to hell, that's where I'm going to party all the time. I said, it won't be no party, son. It'll be darkness and gnashing of teeth and weeping and loneliness, even alienated from God Almighty who's blessed you so much. But your children, your husband, your wife, your relatives, y'all all all be together in heaven. That's God's plan. Amen? I see this, it said, and they should not worship, it said, and the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold. It says, they repent in all the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, neither can see nor hear nor walk. And so we see, Folks, that they, they had idolatry in verse 20. Um, anything you put before God is an idol. And anything that keeps you out of heaven is an idol. You know, you know why most people don't get saved? Now, I was talking to this guy last night, big linebacker, Pickens County. Real respectful, real nice. Only two people raised their hand, he was one of them. He said, the reason I want to get saved, I'm sick of sin. I'm sick of what it's done to me. I'm ashamed 
I'm ashamed, preacher, of what it's done to me. I've forfeited everything. I'm losing my health. I'm losing my family. I'm losing even my self-respect. I'm sick of sin. I said, you're a good candidate to be saved. I said, would you like to be saved? He said, right now. He was telling me to leave him, Lord, before I was finished with my presentation, bless God. So I said, okay, I'll stop right now and lead you to the Lord. Amen. Then a, then a, a counselor try, interrupted her, the thing and wanted to pray because he realized I was in pain standing on the gym floor for 30 minutes. And he wanted to pray for my healing. I said, there's something more important than me. This guy right here is, uh, is wanting to get saved now. Back off. We're praying for him. We're getting, he got saved. Now, folks, that's conviction. But I want to tell you something. Conviction is when you realize there's nothing more important than you to getting saved. There's nothing more important than Jesus Christ. He is the Son of God. He's the only way. He's the only truth. Then it goes on to say uh, that they uh, didn't repent of, uh, it says, neither repented they of their murders. So, folks, if the restrainer's gone, that's the Holy Spirit that restrains evil then there's a lot of murdering going along around during the tribulation. Folks, not only will there be judgment from God, there's judgment from other sinners. I mean, all hell's breaking out. There's no restraint of sin. I'm closing now, but it says, nor of their sorceries. Now, I want you to realize what this word sorceries comes from the Greek word paramakia. That's where we get the word pharmacy. Folks, there's a bunch of drug abuse during the tribulation. I mean, everybody's high, trying to escape the pain. Everybody doesn't care a flip. And I want to tell you something, friend. They believe a delusion because they're delusional. And that's what, that's what liquor will do for you. That's what drugs will do for you. It'll fry your brain. Say amen right there. I'm glad Stephen, for some reason, dwelled on this social drinking Sunday night. This, hey, listen, I want to tell you something. You got anything in your refrigerator that I would be embarrassed about? You ought to get right with God. One-tenth drunk is drunk. There shouldn't be no social drinking in this church. Well, I mean, in church members. We don't have any in this church, I hope. We don't even use wine in the Lord's Supper. That's a crazy picture. I mean, it's, it, hey, it's pure blood, not fermented blood. It would be a bad picture to use fermented wine in, in the Lord's Supper. That would, be a un, that would be an unclear picture. And the Corinthian church got drunk around the Lord's Supper table. That's really, that's really taking the Lord's Supper to the nth degree of, of abuse. I got drunk. And so sorcery means drug addiction. There it is in the Bible. Paramakia, pharmacy, drug abuse. It's going on and on in, in the tribulation. And look at this. You just don't want to be here. Nor of their fornication. All kinds of sexual sins is breaking out all over the world. See, one of the worst judgments you can ever have is if God Almighty lets sin take its course in your life. You'll ruin yourself with sin. You'll actually destroy yourself with drugs, with sex, with uh, disease. It will kill you. The wage of sin is death, but the wage of sin is a lot of misery before you get there. Say amen right there. And folks, listen, there was fornication nor of their thieves, thefts. And so what I'm just saying is, friend, they didn't want to give up their sin. They were rebellious. They were hard-hearted. Um, they didn't want to draw upon the mercy of God. I want you to turn in closing, because I just feel led to go to this chapter to close out. And I know it's early, but this is all I can preach tonight. You pray for me. In Psalms 103. I want to show you what could have taken place in every one of these people's lives that's going through the tribulation. I want to show you what can take place in every born human being on this earth. I don't believe dogs get saved. I don't believe cats get saved. And I'm not making fun of any of them. Brother Lou Rossi used to kill all the cats when he preached and made several people mad. And so I don't, I'm not going to get on the cats. I'm not going to get on the dogs. But they don't have souls. Now, I'll tell you what, my dog's so intelligent, I think he does. And, and uh, you know, he almost talks to me and he obeys me and he, he won't come in the, and he's, he's just well behaved. He's got manners. He's a good dog, I tell you what, he's just a good dog. I don't know who in the world trained him, but it, they did a great job. It wasn't me. Uh, he won't even eat until I tell him to eat. 
He's just a good dog. But that dog ain't got a soul. Amen? And I'm not preaching his funeral when he, when he kicks the bucket. I'm, I'm going I'm to bury him out back like I did the rest of them. And I'll tell you what, my kids have crying spells and they have, they have funerals and they put crosses on the dogs. But folks, we got a soul. And we, got, we know between right and wrong. And to know to do right and do it not, it's sin. Amen? I don't believe dogs know what sin is. Except mine. But, you know, it, it, but I want you to look at this. Psalms 103. Psalms 103, please. I want you to look at this. You say you got a saved dog? No, just close. He's a good moral dog. <laughs> Not a cat lover, but I do love my dog. Look at this. Psalms 103. And I want you to look at this. It says... Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless His holy name. You know why God created you? To bless His holy name. And you know something? You're living beneath your privilege if you don't bless His holy name. But you can't bless Him with just your mouth. You bless Him with your life. Amen? What a purpose. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Did you hear that? Somebody look at that, please. He said, what's the middle word? Forgiveth who? Giveth what? All thine iniquities. Aren't you glad he forgives all of them? Justified. Justified never sin. Look at this. Who healeth all our diseases. Some of them will be healed in heaven. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. You were headed to destruction. He redeemed you. He bought you. He purchased you off the sin block of destruction, who crowneth, crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Makes you, makes you a person worth living with. Loving kindness and tender mercies. Every, every marriage needs that, say amen. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. You'll never be satisfied till you're saved. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He, he made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. And then I want you to look at verse 8. The Lord is what? Merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. So don't shake a fist at God and say, I don't think this tribulation's fair. I don't believe this Revelation 9 is nice. Folks, I want to tell you something. He is slow to anger, and he's plenteous in mercy. And the only reason the rapture hadn't taken place a long time ago is because he loves you so much he's waiting for you to get saved. But one day, the last soul is going to get saved. And he's going to say, that's it. The trump of God's going to sound. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive may shall be caught up. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. When he forgives you, he forgets it. Or treat you as if you've never done it. He's not a forgetful God. It says, now listen, I'm getting to verse 14, please. It says, and he hath not dealt with, he, he, listen to this now, he hath not dealt with us after our sins. Aren't you glad he don't hold the past against you? Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Thank God if it, if it was, if you got what you deserve, we'd all go to hell. But look at this. For as the heaven is above the earth, this is, this is the verse I want you to see. So great is his mercy towards us that fear him. Great mercy. Mercy means he does not give you what you deserve. Listen to this now. Verse 12. And I'm going to close with this. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. It's one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible. That he cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. To remember them no more. He removes them. And that's pretty good removal when you cast them as far as the east is from the west. Because folks, the east is the opposite of west. And when you get saved because of the mercy of God that's everlasting to everlasting, He completely forgives you. And you don't have to go through Revelation chapter 9. And you don't have to go to hell. And folks, neither does your family, and neither does your friends. And neither does your neighbors that are lost. Some of them are religious and lost. They think they're saved and they're not saved. Religion does not make you saved. 
Being a Baptist does not save you. If you don't believe it, Brother Randy was a member of this church a long time before he got saved. Brother Daryl Cox got saved after he was a Sunday school teacher here. Just because you go to church don't make you any more Christian than going in a garage makes you a car. You must be born again. And somebody said, I think it was Harold Seitler, that, uh, or maybe it was Billy Graham, and I believe, friend, that anybody who wants to pray at our presence inaugural, that the Muslims ought to keep their mouth shut. Amen? That's all I'm going to say about that. I mean, praise God. Can't we even pray for somebody? And, and I will tell you something. This, this man needs prayer. I don't trust man. I trust God. My trust is not in man. It's in God. But I want to say this, friend. We need to realize that in this country, we have been shown a space of grace. I believe that we have an opportunity to see more babies born and not killed. This Sunday's Sanctity of Life Sunday. We used to stand out on the road with abortion kills children. I got a picture of me doing that. can't believe I was that undignified to do that. But I'd do it again if I could. Why? Because abortion kills children. But I want to tell you something. Even God will forgive an abortionist, a murderer, if they'll only ask. Say amen. And friend, I want to tell you something. If there's any sin that God will not forgive, you tell me what it is. But I'll tell you, there's one sin that He will not forgive, and that's the day you send the last day of your grace away. And you go into eternity, and then you ask for a purgatory or a time of restitution or a time of getting saved, and it's too late. You say, well, I'll go through the tribulation and get saved. No, you've heard the gospel. You're disqualified from getting saved during the tribulation. You'll never be saved. You'll believe a lie. You'll get so high you won't care. You'll believe a delusion. And so, friend, what I'm telling you, and what I'm begging you to do, is tell your neighbors, tell your lost loved ones, tell your religious loved ones, tell your, tell your friends, tell everybody that judgment's coming and witness to them and be a witness and show them mercy and show them love Show them Jesus and let Christ be seen in your life this year. Because I believe with all my heart, this is the year for the rapture. Now you go out and say I set a date, I'll call you a liar and you can call me one too. Some guy in 1988 gave 88 reasons why he came and then he gave 89 reasons why he didn't come. Amen? In 1988. But I believe he could come this year. Don't you? And friend, I don't want anybody to go through Revelation chapter 9. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your patience and your everlasting mercy. And Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness that you've cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. And Lord, we thank you for that kind of salvation.